Hi, you guys. Welcome back. And of course, if you are new to this channel, welcome. My name is Tracy Erickson, and in this video, I'm going to explore some of the crystals in the Bible and what they might mean. So stay tuned. Just yesterday, I was telling my husband, Neil, in casual conversation that I want to make more crystal videos. And that's just because I really love crystals and working with crystals. And it seems as though there are a lot of people out there who also enjoy learning about crystals. Anyway, so later in the day, I was actually looking in my Bible, I wasn't looking for anything in particular. As usual, I would just open to random pages to receive the wisdom that they may contain. Then I picked up my Bible once again, and I held it and closed my eyes, took a deep breath, and I simply asked for any message that I need to hear right now for me to simply move forward. And so that is when I opened the Bible and I randomly kind of started reading right about Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 11. Oh, afflicted one, storm battered and unconsoled, I lay your pavements in carnelians and your foundations in sapphires. I will make your battlements of rubies, your gates of carbuncles and all your walls of precious stones. I don't know too much about crystals in the Bible because this just kind of happened yesterday. And right away when I read that verse out to my husband, he just said right away, oh wow, we were just talking about how you should make more videos about crystals. So because he said that, I felt like it was kind of like a synchronicity so I should just go ahead and share this with you guys. So just remember that spiritual texts like the Bible and another one that I feature on this channel often is the Bhagavad Gita are really spiritual texts for a reason. You're supposed to read these not only as literal, but you should also be interpreting these as uh, some type of message to your spirit, right? So you don't only look at the words themselves. You have to look at the underlying message that is being shown to you through those particular words. Isaiah chapter 54 is titled The New Zion. Isaiah, at least in the chapter 54, is talking kind of around the time of the Babylonian exile. And there's just a lot of people out there who are waking up and wanting to be freed from the system that has been created. And I get this feeling that the new Zion is representing a new state of mind for humanity after they've had a certain awakening. So after humanity has awaken to the Lord, which is your own I am. So awakening to that connection to the Christ consciousness within, that will cause a, a new way of being and a new way of expressing and experiencing on the physical level. And whenever I read the Bible, I like to look at any spiritual text similar to the way I look at dreams and dream symbols, because dreams and spiritual texts are meant to speak to not only your conscious mind, but they're speaking to your soul. And the language of your soul or your inner self is the language of the images that are involved. 
So those are the people, places, and things. So in these particular verses, we have pavements, foundations, we have battlements, and we have gates. So all of these things kind of represent something a little bit different when it comes to the language of the mind. And so according to the symbology, the pavement made of carnelian, a pavement is something that you would use to walk on to go from point A to point B or to drive on. So pavement is actually kind of like a way showing you to your goals, right? And of course, carnelian is also a crystal that is very connected to your creativity and to your second chakra, the sacral chakra. So it really has a lot to do with creating your goals. Um, so the Lord is speaking of what is being created within mind, within your mind, as you are following the Lord into the new Zion, the new way, right? And as you think of what you may need on the path towards your goal or on any life journey, let's take a look at the Carnelian Crystal in the Encyclopedia of Crystals by Judy Hall. And so it says in here, in parting acceptance of the cycle of life, Carnelian removes fear of death and assists positive life choices. Useful for overcoming abuse, it helps you trust yourself and your perceptions, overcoming negative conditioning. Removing extraneous thoughts when meditating, it tunes daydreamers into everyday reality. A stone of abundance, it motivates for success in business and other matters. And our foundations are in sapphire. So foundations are what you need to begin building something on top of it. And generally speaking, a foundation is needed to build a house or a building on top of it. And in the language of the mind, the language of symbols, a house or some type of structure similar to a house would represent your mind or at least your state of mind, depending on the type of building it is and the function of that place. So in the Bible, when it says, you're, I'm going to make your foundation of sapphire, then we're going to have a strong, firm foundation um, that we can build our mind upon. And we can look to the benefits, the healing benefits of the sapphire to truly understand the interpretation of this verse and what this foundation is that we're building upon. So let's look at the Encyclopedia of Crystals and see what it has to say about Sapphire. It says, known as the Wisdom Stone, Sapphire focuses and calms the mind, releasing unwanted thoughts and mental tension. This stone alleviates depression and spiritual confusion, attracting prosperity and gifts of all kinds. Placed on the throat, it releases frustration and aids self-expression. And our battlements are made of rubies. And rubies are beautiful red gems. And the battlements are really um, the weapons that you would use in some type of of a battle or a fight, you know, with an opposing force. So our battlements, when we are focusing on the Lord, our battlements are made of rubies. So you can, to interpret that, you're going to want to bring in the healing benefit of the ruby to truly understand what it means. And then, of course, our gates are made of carbuncles and Gates are really a place that you pass through and it's it's a it's a doorway that is in the middle of a boundary, right? So this gate that is being referred to could certainly represent entering into different levels of mind. Um, and the carbuncle is what this 
particular gate is made of. As far as I could tell, a carbuncle is a gem which is red and is kind of see-through and is very similar to a ruby. So we're going to go ahead and use the ruby's definition in the Encyclopedia of Crystals for both ruby and carbuncle, but it makes sense for both because we have our battlements being those tools that we use to protect ourselves, our families, and our possessions. And then the gate, um, that is something that is kind of, you know, it's a gate is literally a doorway in a boundary. So I like to see a gate as kind of a portal between dimensions or different levels of mind, okay? So keep that in mind, but let's go ahead and take a look at Encyclopedia of Crystals when it comes to ruby and carbuncle. And it says here that ruby is one of the Vedic healing gems and a major protector for family and possessions, being a powerful shield against psychic attack and vampirism of heart energy. In years gone by, it was fashioned into a specific shape, a cabochon or carbuncle, and ruby is often referred to by its by this name in ancient lapidaries. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing these words correctly. Ruby is one of the warning stones said to darken when danger or illness threatens. It imparts vigor to life, but may overstimulate irritable people. Ruby encourages passion for life, improving motivation, and setting realistic goals. This stone wants you to follow your bliss, promoting positive dreams and clear visualization. One of the stones of abundance, it aids in retaining wealth and passion. So what do you guys think? I know that this was kind of just thrown together. I didn't put, I really didn't put too much thought into what I had found yet. Uh, like I said, I, I may in the future do a little more research and digging into crystals in the Bible. Um, I don't know, but let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below. Well, that about wraps it up for this video. So if you like this video, be sure to click that like button. And of course, share this video with all your friends out there. And of course, if you're a viewer but not yet a subscriber, I would love for you to click subscribe down below. And once you have subscribed, you can then click the notifications bell so that you can be notified each and every time I upload a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching and spending your time with me. I love you and I'll see you next time. Bye.